seven throwing the football. So maybe they're thinking about rethinking their strategy a little bit right now with the way that they're throwing it around, not having that success, might have to lean on the running game for a little while and see if they can get him back in form. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think it. you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. And McManus able to put it through. And, Charles, when you start talking about NFL kickers that have hit from 62 or further, it's a pretty short list, isn't it? That it is. But how about the trust by a head coach to even let your kicker try from that range? That's really showing a lot of faith that he can get the job done. Yeah, faith and guts. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here. Because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. Do you think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to face a third down. from the shotgun. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. up just shy of midfield a gain of three second down what's the old expression three yards in a cloud of dust in this case it's dust covered pellets it's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up now we've got that artificial surface you see the pellets go up still a nice play by the defense Leopard! Leopard! they run this is Cohen Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and shut them down. The Ravens on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Here we go now. Three and 19. Three and 19. From the gun, Jackson. But it's brought in by Washington. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 
It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there. Come out of the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. Here's Jackson. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Jordan Willis able to get in and run him down for a loss of 14. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Here's Jackson to throw. And caught right side, Green. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost himself some yardage there. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. He had a little bit of the turnover bug last week, three interceptions. Not an absolute disaster, but another one here. Do you start to get a little worried? You worry about your team as a whole because you have to find a way to make those interceptions quote-unquote go away, and that means your defense. They've got to go out there on sudden change and at least hold people to field goals. And if that keeps happening, they lose confidence in the quarterback, and then no one plays well. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off by Tony Jefferson. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it second and short. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now they'll run it with Cohen. And he's got some space here. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Now Jackson on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Under four to play now. Clock running, third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. A 
ball popped in the air and intercepted. Read it well and it's picked. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. to throw from his end zone. Webb, quick hitter here, it's complete. And able to get a little more breathing room out to the five-yard line. That throw good for four, it's second down. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Yeah, when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, 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 they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. So a little breathing room now. First and 10 at the 17. Black round! Black round! <laughs> they'll run it now out of the gun. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Ohio! Ohio! Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! Ah! On second down, Webb. Going deep downfield for Ross. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. And the Bengals on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Here we go. Grand 38. Grand 38. Ohio. Ohio. Flex round. Flex round. Good, good, good. He's coming. From the gun, Webb. Webb can't escape as he goes down. Here's Jordan Berry now as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Cincinnati after this. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. Fielded at the 43. A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. An update from that game going on in the Meadowlands. And the Patriots are out to an early lead there over the Jets. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and ten. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. 
Well, the pass rush has been a real strength of late. They know how to get after the quarterback. Absolutely. Four sacks last week. That's their first one here. Anything in particular you've seen from them or on film? I think that they're winning athletically up front, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. But also, when the offensive line wants to keep everyone in and mass protect, they know how to scheme their way back to the quarterback as well. Now Jackson on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Earlier in the quarter when the defense was keying on the run, you said offensively they need to open things up, take some shots downfield. Didn't work there, but they did. Yeah, I'm not going to change my tune now. I still think it's the right play because when you take those shots downfield, you open the eyes of the defense to what you could do to them, and that may open some things up for you offensively. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. 64 was Matt Crater's record. This would top that by a yard. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. one down to about the 40. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run. Sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Looking to throw on second down. Webb escaping the pressure right. Now he'll let it go deep over the middle. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. In for the score. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. Heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. McManus's point after is good. And yeah, that makes our score 17-0. To return, it's DeAndre Washington. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Around the NFL, we've got a second quarter score. And the Patriots are out to an early lead there over the Jets. I have a feeling that one's going to stay tight throughout. We'll continue to monitor. And just 18 seconds remain till halftime as they come up on first and 10. And they'll go on the ground. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Lucky 56. Lucky 56. Oh, 
on second down, Jackson. He's got a rifle one deep left side. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Ravens on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. Here it's third and three. Jackson now. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. On the return, it's Washington. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because... We often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they felt like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. The linebacker, Derek Johnson, in on the stop. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Second down, here's Jackson. Caught right side, it's Snead. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Third down, Jackson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give them 17 on that pickup. This quarterback now, 10 of 17, throwing the ball. He's got a first and 10. Now it's Jackson. That's caught over the middle by Hurst. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now they try the right side here. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Hey, 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 hey. Over, 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 over. 
On first and ten, it's Jackson. Caught by Snead over the middle. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Green, 39! They go play action here on first down. Able to fight through one, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Jackson. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off near the 26. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. So now he's equaled his interception total from a week ago. Remember, Charles, he had three last week. And you know all week long he vowed to take that number down, told the guys on the team, don't worry, things are going to pick up. I've got this. But he is in a major league rut right now. Let's see if his teammates can pick him up along the way. You're right. He talked about being cool, calm, collective, rebounding. Not rebounding right Ohio. here. Ohio. Now a first down throw. Webb, he's going to air one out. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Flex round! Flex round! <laughs> back to the air on second down. Swim. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Here's Webb. Steps away to his left. Going deep downfield for Ross. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. Or the mental focus. Yeah, the that's true. got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Oh, look at the juke. Breaks the tackle, now an alley. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and 10. And now here come the Ravens. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see, do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? Over, 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 over! All right, now, lucky 56, lucky 56! They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. Get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there, just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. At 
after the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Play action. Now Jackson. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Jordan Willis in there to get him his second sack now in the afternoon. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there is just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out. Not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Jackson on third and long. And that is incomplete. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they've stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. this up to about the 14. Call it an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be third down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Now the Bengals on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. Webb now. Going deep downfield for Ross. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And taken at the 46. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. Checking the NFL scoreboard there in the third at MetLife Stadium. The Jets have just scored to take the lead over the Patriots. We'll keep you updated on that one as it progresses. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Now it's Jackson, and his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at the 24. And it's a big turnover there on the final play of the quarter. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Toss, Bernard. Man, tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. 
run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he won't get much, maybe a couple, down inside the 35 to the 34. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And the Bengals on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, it's Webb. Looking deep downfield. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Despite the lead here in the fourth, they're still taking shots. Not content to sit on this lead at all. And to me, it raises the question of what's right in this game nowadays? Do you sit on the ball and run it because you have enough of a lead? Or do you try and extend it because you always feel like the other team can come back? Extend it. Have some fun. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Fight, but he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. Jackson from the shotgun. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Detroit! Detroit! to throw on third down. Jackson, and they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. He's gonna air it out deep for Green. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. Second and ten. Here's Jackson again. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Nice game there, partner. But you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Jackson on first down. And now here is another interception. Picked off at the 28. Yet another interception, and I just had to double check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used a calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot 
They're trying to figure out what they can do to change it, and sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. And some room to work. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. A big play there for the Bengals. 46 yards on the ground. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Flex round! Flex round! <laughs> and they will take a knee here. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. <laughs> and they take a knee. A big play to start the drive got him in this position, but this defense has held firm since, and now it's third and goal. Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. And on fourth down, they come up and take the knee. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, Detroit! I'm going to Detroit! do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. Throwing is Jackson. Green's got it over the middle. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Now Jackson to throw on second down. And he will take this down to the 10-yard line. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now. That's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as if they can't even believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game? Well, they've said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. <laughs> and they'll indeed take a knee. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. And they will take a knee here. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. And what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too? 
so for Cincinnati, hey, they finish a perfect month of September as they move to 4-0 and on the new campaign. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Buffalo Bills next week. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they'll sink now to 0-4. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Heinz Field to take on the Steelers. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.